Welcome back. I've got a great video for you today talking about the Great Awakening slash Grand Deception, talking about the false light slash false Christ that could be coming on the scene, potentially. We want to be awake and aware for it. Uh, this article, by the way, is included in the Great Awakening Guide that I created for you to share all of this knowledge and information and resources and uh, documentaries, books, etc. You can find that at greatawakeningguide.com. All right, let's jump in here and see what we have. Uh, what we have here. I'll put the link in the description down below for this video. Website from inhiscommission.com, The Great Awakening, The Grand Deception, by Charles Gray Adams Jr. So it was written in on July 18th, 2022 for context. God clearly defined how the last days would play out in the Bible. In fact, the book of Revelation provides the best overview of the transition from the age of grace into the seven-year tribulation, which ends with the inauguration of the millennial kingdom. However, the primary focus of the book of Revelation is the tribulation during which all governments succumb to the one world government, excuse me, succumb to the one world government, religion, and economy of the Antichrist, Revelation 13. See, that's what we want to be awake and aware about when we move in, because things are definitely sketch in the world. <clears throat> excuse me. This suggests that all nations will be in a state of decline at the end of the age of grace, an end which is clearly upon us, and I do agree with that. Therefore, trying to revive the United States is akin to warring against God's plan. And this I struggle with because, you know, I know that God gave us free will, and I, and I, well, I believe God gave us free will. I believe we're here to do God's work on, on, in the, in the world and make to the degree that we can heaven on earth. And so I struggle with that aspect of letting things play out versus, um, you know, trying to keep the world and be good steward of God's creation. Maybe you do too. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any insights, I'm happy to hear them. I'd love to hear them. This means those who are procreating the great awakening have fallen for a grand deception, which will leave them hopeless when the delusion crumbles. And one of the reasons I included this in the Great Awakening Guide is because I want people to be aware of it, and I want to be aware of it myself. I do not want to go against what God's plan is uh, by any stretch of the imagination. This article will attempt to shed light upon the grand deception of the Great Awakening while simultaneously providing, excuse me, proving that believers are actually to be occupied with fulfilling the Lord's will while looking for that blessed hope called the rapture. See, that's what, like I just said, I want to do God's will and God's will right now is telling me to share knowledge and information to help wake people up and or uh, inform them about what's going on in the world. So there's definitely some conflicting things going on. Everywhere you turn, someone is proclaiming that a great awakening is taking place in America. Indeed, the call for revival is rising to a crescendo as the voices of many spiritual and political leaders converge into a plea for the impossible, the resurrection of a once great nation. Sadly, America, once the greatest beacon of hope, to ever exist is now fallen and writhing as a blind one in death throes. The brilliant light of this nation, which was founded upon Judeo-Christian principles, have been extinguished because of continued rejection of God. Now, incredibly, even this call for revival is a sign of America's departure from the true light provided by walking in the will of God. You see, the Great Awakening is not about following the biblical mandate, of the Great Commission and reaching out to lost souls. Instead, it is about reviving a lost nation. This is not what God called the church to do. Throughout Scripture, the church is charged with being about his business of making disciples and told to look up when the signs of the times become what they are now as the great falling away manifests. With this in mind, it is paramount to understand what is behind this grand deception known as the Great Awakening, the Kingdom Now Heresy. Let's talk about where he says reviving, reaching out to lost souls. I don't see a distinction between, th that's what I feel, that's what I'm doing. You know, I, if you follow me, you realize, you may remember that the Great Awakening started as um, the Patriot's Guide to Saving America. 
I changed the name for two reasons. First to how to save the world and then to the Great Awakening. And I changed it because for that very reason, as I move forward in my life and my business, I didn't want something tied to America if America is going to fall. If that's the collective choice of Americans to allow it to happen, see, I again, back to free will. You can allow things to happen in your life. You could allow yourself to sit and sit by the side of the road and just decay. You could allow, or you could allow yourself to renew yourself every day, your body, mind, and spirit, and go forward. I change it to the Great Awakening because that's where I'm more centered on is uh, awakening hearts and minds and sharing knowledge and information. So I'm I'm not necessarily about saving America because I know that that's not my choice and I'm not going to put my eggs in that basket if the people of America don't want America to be saved. It's a collective choice. So, you know, a couple things could be going on at the same time in, in where we're talking about these ideas. Briefly, the kingdom now adherents allege that new apostles and prophets have brought forth new revelation from God, which changes the end God so laboriously set forth in Scripture. They believe the kingdom of God will manifest in those who adhere to kingdom now beliefs, thus doing away with the messy aftermath of the rapture and the subsequent tribulation. There is just one major problem with their belief system. It is not biblical, right? We have to keep that in mind. Here are the scriptures that validate the viewpoint that the church purifies the world through a great awakening and establishes the kingdom now. Chirp, 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 crickets. That's right, there are none. Therefore, this idea is completely man-made. This is one of the many ways false leaders have drawn men into themselves. They, create, they simply depart from the sound doctrines of scripture. 1 Timothy 4.16, Titus 1.9, make up their own doctrines and disperse their errant beliefs to the masses who, because they have itching ears, want to hear the message put forth. Proponents of the Kingdom Now theology believe that Jesus will not return until the earth is conquered by the ever-expanding Kingdom of God built by men. In reality, consulting God's Word on the Kingdom depicts a coming Kingdom rather than a now Kingdom. Perhaps the best place to look for defining information on how the Kingdom Now, excuse me, the final Kingdom actually comes about is from the aforementioned last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, which is a panoramic view of the last days. Close study of the entire book of Revelation establishes the fact that the authentic church does not usher in the kingdom of God into the world by infiltrating its systems and rising to supremacy. Instead, this most magnificent book describes in great detail how the kingdom of the Antichrist is built and used to destroy those who come to true belief in Christ during the tribulation and the kingdom of Christ will not come into existence until Jesus returns to the very, at the very end of the seven-year tribulation. Sadly, many who have been led astray are unknowingly building the faux, the faux kingdom of the Antichrist, and they will even, without repentance, inadvertently worship the Antichrist, believing he is the Christ they had so diligently built the kingdom for. I believe that's where we have to use our discernment and prayer and ask God for guidance, right? We definitely don't want to fall into that trap. They will even fall for the mark of the beast, believing it is the seal of God. Worst yet, they will, they will also become so zealous that they are the very ones who pursue, persecute, and slay the tribulation saints. Yikes. Throughout history, many of the greatest persecutors have been those who are the most zealous adherents to errant religious belief systems. Fox's Book of Martyrs provides great detail about these instances. Unimaginably, the coming tribulation will cause all former persecutions to pale in comparison as it will be global in scale. Dude, wow. Revelation 13, 15, And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause all who do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Emphasis mine. Contrary to kingdom now theology, the church is clearly absent from the earth during the tribulation. In fact, this absence coincides with John being called up to heaven in Revelation 4.1, which many believe is indicative of the rapture. The way of proof, by way of proof, the next time the church is mentioned as the church 
is in the closing statements of the book of Revelation 22, 16, when Jesus reiterates the fact that the entire message of the book of Revelation is to be testified to the churches. This means those who spread the false doctrine of the kingdom now are doing so in direct opposition of God's word, which is very dangerous. And therein lies the crux of it, right? And why I wanted to share this with you, and again, why this is included in the Great Awakening Guide. We want to make sure we're being doing, doing the right thing as we move forward. I'm very conscious of it. The, dan the specific dangers associated with changing the way God depicts the end are varied and should be emphasized. First, the book of Revelation contains a specific warning about how it is to be preserved and shared. Revelation 22, 18 through 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. You definitely don't want that. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Okay, so we want to be careful. This warning is serious indeed. Think about it for a second. Changing what the Lord said about how, his, how things are concluded according to his plan causes the plagues of this book to come upon the one who changes it. Do you realize what this is saying? It is saying the one who dares to change what God has said will not make the rapture and have to suffer the plagues of the tribulation. Bad, uh, yeah, we don't want that. Even more serious is the fact that those who alter what God has said will be removed from the book of life. Ironically, this means those who generate and share the kingdom now theology in their misguided attempt to establish God's kingdom on earth, actually be excluded from it altogether. The second danger, believing there is no rapture, and that building a physical kingdom now is the only hope for mankind, causes misplaced focus, which will have devastating impact on the eternal future of those who are deceived. Deception is the name of the game as we move into the future, right? As we shine the light of awareness on lies and deception uh, and share knowledge and information. We want to be sure that we're not ourselves deceived, right? Into believing that, uh, let's see, imagine for a second that you were deceived into believing that you had to work very hard at rising to the top of whatever field or endeavor you are involved in for the sake of building the kingdom now. Thus, you are steadily working on promoting the physical kingdom while disregarding the future kingdom altogether. At the last hour, somehow, some way, you see the error of your ways and repent and make the rapture. At that moment, you realize that although you made it to heaven, you got there by the skin of your teeth with no heavenly rewards. This is true because you were busy building the earthly kingdom, which was never to come, instead of building the heavenly kingdom, which was. After all, Jesus teaches that men should lay up treasures in heaven rather than on the earth, where moth and rust rust corrupts. Sadly, you even missed out on the crown of righteousness, which is given to those who long for his appearing. Okay, you know, this is interesting because a lot of people, you know, one of the things that I struggle with, again, like I, like I alluded to earlier, is trying to do the right thing, trying to do what Jesus would do, what God would do, if, God, if they were here, be like, be like Christ, Christ-like or God-like, um, and that's why I wanted to share this and learn from myself too, right? I, I, I do struggle with this. Let's be clear. But also I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do what this article is inferring, build the king, the now kingdom and not think about the other kingdom, but it's, it's a challenge. Um, one last danger should be discussed here. Believing one lie from false leaders makes the deceived susceptible to other lies. Ooh, I love that statement because as I've talked about prior, the new idea that I'm thinking about a lot lately is falsus unus, falsus optimus. If one thing's a lie, all things are a lie, and that's where I'm at right now. Uh, typically, those who are unsound about one area of the Bible are, because of their misconceptions, wrong about other areas. This often results in the remainder of the Bible having to be modified in order to justify the errant doctrine. Hmm. This generally leads to increasingly worse deviation, which can cause the deceived to rely even more heavily on the deceiver to sort out 
all of the problems created by getting off track in the first place. The end result is deception grows as the blind lead the blind further away from sound doctrine. I can see that happening. The simplest way to avoid all these dangers is to rely solely on Scripture as the standard of truth. After all, Scripture says, let God be true, but every man a liar. Dude, that is wild. I wish a whole world could hear that. Therefore, the best way to assure correct understanding of what God has relayed to man is to study, to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This often quoted scripture is paramount because it indicates every individual has a responsibility to validate, validate each thought and belief by examining it through the light of God's word. This type of examination is what caused the barons to be included in the pages of the Bible. They simply verified everything said by everyone, even the Apostle Paul. This type of exploration of Scripture regarding the last days will lead the student to realize the falsehood of the kingdom now doctrine while simultaneously validating the doctrine of pre-tribulation rapture which will take place when the church is in the midst of decline rather than revival, a process that is already underway. This is not to say that the remnant church is in spiritual decline. Instead, the point is that the remnant church will be in decline in terms of numbers, as many will fall away because they love this world more than the next, <laughs> which is wild, which is wild given what's under going on in the world. The more craziness that goes in the world, the more I look to the next world, the next two, uh, the next place. You know, this place is whack in many ways. Ironically, the false church that propagates the kingdom now doctrine will absorb those who fall away and continue to grow right past the rapture, and they will even achieve their goal of becoming dominant in this world. Unfortunately, they will, without repentance, end up part of the Apostle Church of Babylon. Before concluding, it is very important to note that it is not improper to desire revival, which undoubtedly provides growth of the kingdom of God on earth. However, it is crucial to understand exactly what the kingdom of God is right now. Jesus made it very clear that his kingdom is not of this earth, and it will not come to earth until the full force of God's wrath has reshaped everything we now know as earth during the seal, trumpet, and bowl judgments of the tribulation. With this in mind, what is the kingdom of God right now? Simply put, God's kingdom exists in the hearts of those who have chosen to make him king. Therefore, the kingdom of God is not a physical, religious, or political kingdom. Instead, it is a spiritual kingdom that may only be built or expanded spiritually. That's that's wild right there. That's That really hits, hits me, to be honest. Uh, one special note should be added here throughout history. The times of greatest revival have not caused people to rise up and take back their countries. On the contrary, those who have witnessed these great moments always affirm the fact that these times of refreshing are marked by bended knee and yielded hearts, which in turn leads to salvation of many in fulfillment of the Great Commission. This is how the spiritual kingdom of God grows. There is no paragraph in this article that hits me as much as that one, and that is what's happened to me, too, um, over the last few years as I see this evil come upon us. I mean, I'm doing things I've never done before and going places I've never gone in a long time, i.e. churches, and getting on, doing everything I can to get right with God. Let's just put it that way, right? Um this reflection upon true revival provides further proof that the kingdom now doctrine is false because the doctrine runs contrary to historical revival and revealed and the revealed will of God held in scripture the good news is that when one forsakes their own will to follow the will of God he will always lead them to his revealed will in Scripture. In the case of the kingdom, he set forth a specific way for things to play out at the end of time, and that is exactly how things will happen. By the way, who is it exactly that has always tried to change God's plan? That would be the great deceiver himself, the God of this world, Satan, who will empower the Antichrist during the tribulation.
Dare I forget to mention that God has a plan for Satan as well. He will end up in the ever-burning lake of fire along with all who serve and or worship him. Revelation 20, 10 through 15. In conclusion, the grand deception of the Great Awakening is growing in strength and scope. Incredibly, this is further affirmation that God is God as he foretold this nearly 2,000 years ago in the Bible. And that's one of the things that made me run back towards God, uh, seeing how things are playing out, and that they were foretold in this way. Indeed, the Lord told us that many would depart from teaching sound doctrine, while simultaneously would many would flock to these false teachers because they want to hear the lies they tickle their ears with. The best antidote for this grand deception is a healthy dose of the truth of Scripture, which indicates that the remnant church will remain steadfast and continue to fulfill the Great Commission while simultaneously looking up until raptured. When this light of God's Word is applied to the errant beliefs of the Kingdom Now doctrine, the doctrine crumbles because it has no biblical foundation. Be a Berian and search this out. God has already provided all the answers you seek. Isaiah 46.10, I declare the end from the beginning and ancient times from what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and my good pleasure will be accomplished. Well, let me know what you think um, in the comment section down below, but I wanted to share that with you and, you know, it's something to be, we need to be thinking about for sure. If you found this video helpful, leave me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. I'd love to have you as a subscriber, not only here on my YouTube channels, but channel, but anywhere on social media at G Mark Phillips. Until next time, I wish you all the best health, wealth, and success. Thanks so much.